Radio Frequency Identification, or RFID, uses radio to identify and track tags. This PicoDev RFID module has a radio transducer in it that's able to energize this passive tag wirelessly and interrogate it for its unique ID and also exchange data. We're going to connect our PicoDev RFID module to a Raspberry Pi today and we'll run some example code to read the IDs of some tags and even exchange data with them in some mini projects. Let's get started. To follow along, you'll need a Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B today, and this has already been set up to run like a desktop computer. If you're following along, it's best if you already know how to do this. Check out our Getting Started workshop if you need help there. You'll of course need a PicoDev RFID module and an adapter for Raspberry Pi, as well as a PicoDev cable to connect everything together. Have at least one RFID tag to work with. I've got a few here, and RFID tags come in all different shapes, sizes, and standards. For best results, we recommend using an NTAG213 type of tag. I'm also using a classic or MyFair tag today, which will still work with most examples. Check the article for the latest compatibility information. Connect your PicoDev adapter to your Pi, and on a Raspberry Pi 4, the Ethernet arrow on the adapter will point towards the Ethernet socket. On a Raspberry Pi 3B, this will be the USB connector instead. Connect your PicoDev cable to one of the sockets on the adapter and connect the other end to your RFID module. And I've just mounted everything to this PicoDev platform to keep it nice and stable. Power up your Pi, connect it to the internet, and we'll just do a bit of housekeeping before we can get started. Open the Preferences Raspberry Pi configuration menu and make sure that we have the I2C interface enabled. That's under the Interfaces tab. Just make sure we have it enabled there. Next, open up Thony IDE from the Programming menu and make sure we have the PicoDev package installed. Go to Tools, Manage Packages, and search for PicoDev with two eyes. Here it is. And just install or upgrade as necessary if you need to upgrade to the latest edition. Your RFID module has an address switch near the bottom edge labeled ASW. Make sure that both the switches here are in the off position. That's with the switches in the lower position. In the article for this tutorial, find the first example and right click that read ID link and save link as. I'm gonna save this example to a PicoDev directory in my home directory. And back in Thony, navigate to this directory and open that file. This is a simple example that just reads the ID off an RFID tag. We start by importing the package to drive the RFID module and a sleep function. Next, we call the initialization function to initialize the RFID and we call that object RFID. In the infinite loop, we check if a tag is present and if there is a tag present, we call read ID, which will return a string of that tag's ID. That gets assigned to the ID variable, which is then just printed. After a short delay, the whole thing just loops again. Run your program and grab a tag and we can see we're prompted to place a tag near the module. If I bring that in close, we can see a printout of this tag's ID. It's this string of letters and numbers. Each pair here is separated by a colon. If I try with another tag, we can see that that should be a separate unique ID. If I try with a classic tag, it's interesting to note that the ID is a shorter string, but it still works. If we want to get more detailed information about our tag, we can comment out this line the read ID line, and I'll uncomment the line below it. I'm using Alt-3 and Alt-4 to comment and uncomment. This is exactly the same, except the function is now being passed an argument detail equals true. This means we want more details. I'll run the script with Control r and this time, when I scan my first tag, so we have something called success, which is true. We have the ID in an integer format, which is very useful if we just want to work with numbers. We also have the ID in that string format, which is separated by colons. And we have the type, which here has been identified as n tag. If I bring in the classic, then we can see that the type has been identified as classic. And of course it has the shorter IDs associated with it. Now, if I read continuously and then remove the tag in the middle of a read, we can see that the success flag is false. So this is telling us whether a read was complete or not. We can see because we have a false here, we know that we don't have any valid data in our ID string or in our ID integers. So this can be quite a useful feature to interrogate this success flag. It's quite common to see RFID being used for access control. This is where a door might have a special piece of electronics on it where only authorized users with a special tag 
when scanned can pass through that door, uses without a special tag a denied entry. This next example is kind of like a starter project for an access control project. Find example two and right click that link, save link as. I'll save it in the same place. Back in Thony, we can open up accesscontrol.py. And this is pretty similar to the code we were already running. You can see we've got the same setup. There's even if tag present, then read ID. The main difference is this little bit of logic down the bottom. But let's just run the script and see what happens. I'm being prompted to hold a tag near the module. And we can see I have my tag ID being printed and access is denied. In the infinite loop, we're checking if ID is in authorized users. And this is a way in Python to say, does this string exist in this list? So we can see we have an empty list up here called authorized users. And it currently has an empty string. If we copy that ID from the shell and paste it into authorized users, let's rerun the script and see what happens. I'll use that same tag. And now when I scan the tag, it says access granted. How good. Of course, if I take another unauthorized tag and scan that, I will still see access denied. Now, because authorized users is a list, we can add more entries to it. So I can take the code for my blue tag, I can take that ID and just append or add it to the list with a comma. And then I'll open the quotes, paste that ID, close the quotes, run the script with control R, and now my blue tag should work as well. There you go. So there you have an easy getting started project for access control. You know, a really cool feature of these tags is that they can be programmed to be interactive. What that means is when you hold them against a smart reader, say like a smartphone, there can be special code on the tag that instructs the reader to perform some action. This could be opening a web address or composing an email to a specific recipient. It can even be like a, a geographical location provided by some coordinates. Let's take it for a spin. Find the next example, the right URI example. Right click and save as. And let's take a look. This time around in the infinite loop, after we check if a tag is present, we're using the right URI function. And this is the function that will load that special link onto the tag, that special information about web addresses or email addresses. And you can see that we're writing a variable called web address, and that's currently defined up here, along with a few other URIs. The URI scheme for a web address is that HTTPS or HTTP. We've got a geolocation here, and the URI scheme for that is geo. Mail2 can be used for email addresses, and tel is being used for phone numbers. This is currently set up to write this web address to the tag, so let's take it for a spin. I'll run the code and scan my tag. The write was successful. I'll get out my phone and hold the tag to the back of the phone. And immediately we're opening up a web page. And this looks like it is the just a collection of Picadev guides. How good's that? Let's try writing this geo location. I'll copy that variable, paste it into write URI. Rerun the script, use the same tag. The write is successful. Now when I hold the tag to the back of my phone, we immediately jump into a menu to choose what app we want to open. I'll open maps and we have jumped to that exact coordinate. How nice. There are a bunch of other URIs that you can write to a tag. Full link is in the article. So the last example was all about using special data with a special reader. But what if we just want to write our own data to the tag and then read it back using this RFID module? Well, it turns out we can write text and numbers to our tags. Find the next example, which is all about text and save that link. Open up the write text example in Thony, and you can see here we're going to write the string hello world to the tag using the write text function. I'll run the script, use the tag, and we can see that the text in the tag is hello world. So we can actually write uppercase letters, lowercase letters, and some ASCII characters as well. And there's no funny business going on here. The text that's showing up on the screen is actually coming from the read text function. So we're calling read text, assigning that to data, and then just printing data. And you can store up to 143 characters of text on one of these. 
So that was text, but of course we can write numbers as well. Find the write numbers example, right click and save that link. Open up in Thonny and of course it looks pretty similar. This time we're just using the write number function. We're going to write 123,456 and this second argument is the location to store that number. Let's run the script, hold our tag and we can see the number has been read from the tag. We have a read back here where we're reading into data and then printing data. So what's up with this slot argument here? Well, slots are what we're calling safe places to read and write data on a tag. There are loads of other locations on a tag where you can read and write data, but if you do it wrong, it can actually break your tag. There are 36 slots numbered zero to 35, and they can all hold some pretty large integers. So you can do quite a lot with them. Finally, we're gonna work with multiple RFID modules. It's actually possible to connect up to four Picadev RFID modules on the same Picadev bus. The only requirement is that they all have unique address switch positions. You might recall at the start of the tutorial, we set the address switch on our first unit to be both off. For my second RFID module, I'm just turning on ASW1. That's the first switch on the left. Return to the article and find the multiple readers example. Save that link and open in Thonny. This example is basically the same as the very first example that we did looking at IDs. This time we are able to do it with two modules. The difference is in how we initialize the modules. Now when we initialize the first module, we're initializing it with the argument ASW equals, and then a list of integers. These integers are the positions of the ASW switches. Zero means off and one means on. So for our first module, we have both switches off, zero, zero. And for the second module, we have the first switch on and the second switch off. So that's one, zero. We get to call these RFID readers anything we like. So I'm calling them reader A and reader B to distinguish them. And then in the infinite loop, we just check if a tag is present on reader A and read its ID. And then we check if a tag is present on reader B and read its ID as well. So if I run this script and take my tag and hold it to reader A, which is the first one, we should see RFID A and there's the ID of this blue tag. Now, if I hold it to the second reader, we get RFID B reading that same ID. So we're able to work with two readers independently. And of course, this extends up to four. For more advanced users that would rather just work with I squared C addresses, there's actually a table to decode the I squared C address from the switch position on the back. We can see that our first module with off off, we would be using address 2C, and our second module with the switches on off, we would be using address 2D. So we can just enter those in. So we can just enter those in under the address argument instead, and it'll work just the same. There you go. So there you have it, a bunch of starter projects and examples for getting started with the PicoDev RFID module. You know, we did basic ID reading and then did a basic access control project so we could differentiate between tags. We even made interactive tags that can take us to specific web pages or locations on the planet. You could use the data storage examples if you wanted to say, make your own vending machine and keep some kind of balance on the tag with what kind of, with how much credit the user has. If you make something cool from these projects, we'd love to hear from you on the Core Electronics forums. Or if you just have some questions, let us know. We're full-time makers and happy to help. Until next time, happy making.